The Vatican today released its long-awaited report on the case of ex-cardinal and ex-priest Theodore McCarrick. When the scandals around McCarrick first erupted in the summer of 2018, it created a crisis in the American church. It is part of what is now remembered as the U.S. Church's Summer of Shame, and it raised the question of who knew what when in Rome. The Vatican at that time vowed to get to the bottom of it. Today, they took their shot at it. The report in its full English version runs to 449 pages. It is by far the largest such report on a single case the Vatican has ever issued. To recap, Theodore McCarrick was one of the most influential prelates in the United States for more than 30 years, and his case, like no other in the story of the child abuse scandals, has put the spotlight not simply on the crime of child sexual abuse, but the cover-up, because the question that has been asked is how was he able to climb the ecclesiastical ladder, moving from the Archdiocese of Newark to Washington, then becoming a cardinal, even after his retirement playing an influential role, and his star seeming to grow in the early years of the Francis papacy. How is all of that possible, despite the fact that rumors and suggestions about misconduct began to circulate in the 1980s, and that by the late 1990s, they were known both to a number of American bishops and also to Rome? The Vatican Report attempts to answer that burning question in four points. First, First, it suggests that the critical inflection points in the McCarrick saga came under John Paul II in 2000 when he was named to Washington and in 2008 when the Vatican under Pope Benedict XVI uh, appealed to McCarrick to withdraw from public life to keep a low profile but never enforced those indications and so in effect uh, he was able to continue to hold himself out as a cardinal in good standing. John Paul's decision came despite the fact that the Vatican a report tells us he had a letter from the late Cardinal John O'Connor of New York to the papal ambassador in the States that made its way to John Paul, outlining reports of various forms of abuse and misconduct, and under Benedict XVI, the decision to not enforce the indications came despite the fact that some of those allegations had resurfaced with new details. In terms of explaining why, the report suggests that in the case of John Paul, uh, first of all, McCarrick denied it. Secondly, John Paul had asked uh, his ambassador in America to ask bishops in New Jersey to look into these charges, and they responded with what the report describes as incomplete and inaccurate information. Third, John Paul may have been influenced by his experience of spurious allegations against bishops in communist Poland as part of his strategy to weaken the church. Fourth and finally, he knew McCarrick personally, and that might also have played a role. As far as Benedict, the suggestion is, uh, Benedict did not enforce these instructions, and he also opted not to pursue a canonical investigation, that is, a formal legal process against McCarrick, again, because McCarrick denied it, because at that stage, the accusations did not involve child abuse, uh, also because of McCarrick's advanced age and the fact he was already retired. Secondly, as far as Pope Francis goes, you will recall that Francis faced that explosive allegation from his own former ambassador in America, <clears throat> Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. Vigano claims that he personally briefed Francis in June 2013 about the reports against McCarrick and that Francis failed to act. Vigano actually suggested the Pope should resign over that failure. The report indicates that the Pope has no personal memory of that conversation with Vigano, uh, that uh, the evidence over what transpired in that meeting is, as the report says, sharply disputed. And in any event, it suggests that what Pope Francis knew in, at that point in 2013 was that these were old allegations that had been looked into under John Paul II and Benedict XVI uh, and set aside. J Francis, therefore, trusted the judgment of his predecessors, according to the report. Third, despite allegations that McCarrick's legendary prowess as a fundraiser means he was able, in effect, to use money to purchase cover in the Vatican. The report says there is no evidence of a quid pro quo, no evidence that money played any role in the decisions made about McCarrick. Fourth and finally, the report indicates that the principal factor in the way the McCarrick story played out here in Rome is McCarrick himself. He repeatedly and explicitly denied the charges against him. And in the absence of clear and convincing proof to the contrary, on the basis 
basis of his status as a bishop and a cardinal in good standing, he was believed. All right, that's what we know about the Vatican report for now. We are obviously going to continue to cover this story in detail, both for Word on Fire and also on the Crux site. Crux is the independent Catholic news agency that I edit. You can find us at cruxnow.com. That is cruxnow.com. Please stay with us at both places as this story develops. In the meantime, I'm John Allen reporting from Rome.